What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna to be doing one of my most requested versus videos, and we're going to be comparing the Beretta M9 versus the 1911. I do have a lot of experience on both platforms, but I do have a lot more experience on the 1911. Cut me a little bit of slack on the M9. I have, I do own one and I have shot one quite a bit, but not near as much as the 1911. First off, a little history on both. The 1911, guess when it was made? It was made in 1911. So it's been around for quite a while and it was one of the longest running weapons in the US military history. It was the sidearm of the US military for a very long time, all the way up until the Beretta M9, the other gun in this versus video, actually replaced it. Now, off the top of my head, I think it's right around 1985 or so that that happened. The Beretta M9 is a significantly newer pistol than the 1911. However, both of them are a little bit dated in comparison to today's polymer frame 9 mm wonder guns. The Beretta M9 here, this is a standard M9, which I changed the grips on. These are VZ grips. I just like them better. And not much else. I got this straight from the store just like this. However, this is a pretty unique 1911 that I have here. I compared the two because I thought they had very similar grips and they look very cool. However, I do have a lot of experience on the 5-inch 1911s and I actually do prefer them. This is a commander size 1911. This is a Dan Wesson Guardian 9mm. So both of these are in 9 millimeter and I will be pretty much comparing them like both guns are in nine millimeter because that's what I own and that's what I like however for a frame of reference the 45 versus nine millimeter bait has been done a long long time and it's been done a large amount on YouTube so you can easily find videos on that however if you want a quick comparison of nine millimeter versus 30 45 45 is bigger slightly slower it costs more to shoot but it hits harder nine millimeter is faster follow-up shots cheaper to shoot with and it is uh, just easier to practice with which is why I prefer the nine millimeter you also get a higher magazine capacity with nine millimeter and with modern bullets nine millimeter is almost as effective as 45 over 45 still does hit harder still has more pounds of energy and it's just a bigger hole that's going through the person that you're shooting it or the thing that you're shooting it whatever it may be so 45 versus 9 millimeter debate over choose what you like however 1911s do come in 9 millimeter so that's what we'll be comparing now the 1911 is a single action gun meaning that there is no going on here if you don't cock the hammer so if you cock the hammer and the safety's off Single action means it's gonna have a short, crisp, light, very accurate trigger pull. The 1911 has the best trigger in the business. It has for a long, long time. I don't think there's a gun today that still beats it. That's why it's a mainstay in competition, even today. Now, one of the problems that I have is the multiple safeties on the 1911. As you see here, there is a manual safety. Not a problem if it's really your only gun and you're used to sweeping that safety off when it comes out of the holster. Now, there are reports of very experienced shooters having problems with that in close range engagements, like a concealed carry situation, that kind of thing, and forgetting to sweep that safety off and pulling the trigger and nothing's happening and uh, bad things happen to them. So if you don't like the manual safety, you're kind of gonna have to deal with it with the 1911. Another thing you're gonna have to deal with with the 1911 is gonna be that grip safety right there. Now, I the 1911 might be my favorite gun, and I don't even like that grip safety. I hate grip safeties, and even in the past, uh, serious lawmen, things like that, and competitive shooters would pin this down. So if you don't like the grip safety, you can do that. However, you're gonna have to check the legalities of doing that and warranty issues and that kind of thing. Now, if you look up here, I do have this magnaported. I'll do another video on that someday. Now, another problem with the 1911 you're gonna have even in a nine millimeters magazine capacity. As you see there, 10 plus one, not great in comparison to the 16 plus one of the Beretta M9. I forgot the mag weight, my bad. But it does hold 16 plus one, 17 rounds. That is six more rounds if you're counting there. And another big pro of the Beretta M9, in my opinion, is the double action pull. Now, I like double action pull because double action won the West for a reason. You don't have to have it cocked and locked to be ready to go. You can simply pull the trigger from double action 
and get that first shot off. Meaning if you're going to carry this appendix, something like that, in my opinion, double action is a little bit safer. Maybe not compared to the double safety 1911, but compared to a striker fired gun, double action is much safer because you have that long trigger pull before anything bad happens to your junk. And another thing, if you don't like safeties on the M9, you can switch this out for a decocker only, which is nice on the Beretta because the biggest count of the Beretta, in my opinion, is the placement of the safety. Now, the, some of the Taurus guns actually have the safety on the uh, frame, and if those weren't huge chunks of crap for the most part, now there are some good ones, don't get me wrong, but you're more likely to get a bad one with Taurus than you are with an actual Beretta. Beretta just has higher manufacturing quality. It is just what it is. The reason why that is is because if you're racking the slide, a lot of times you'll push that safety on and then nothing's happening and you're not sure why, right? It's always bad when you're trying to pull the trigger on your gun and you're not sure why it's not going on. So that's a con, but you can switch that to a decocker and if that happens on a decocker model, it will still use that double action pull and you will still be able to fire in an emergency. So that's a big plus of the Breda. The capacity is a big plus and also also the slightly lighter weight. Compared to a full-size steel frame 1911, the Beretta is lighter. And I want to say it's a significant amount, somewhere in the seven ounce margin. However, these two guns are of equal weight because you can get alloy frame 1911s, aluminum frame 1911s, scandium frame 1911s now that do weigh as little or even less than the Beretta. Now this is one of the lightest 1911s on the market. I think this is right around 28 ounces. However, this is made for carry. And you can see by the bobtail that it's meant not to print and all that kind of stuff. This is one of my favorite 1911s, but here comes another con of the 1911, right? This gun, as you see here, is about $1,300. And that is for a pretty much premium quality 1911. Now it's one step under custom. Dan Wesson makes phenomenal firearms, but they do sort of mass produce them as opposed to hand fit them. So you are gonna have to pay a lot, but not as much as something like a Wilson Combat. Now Colt makes a pretty quality firearm for around $700, but that's still $300 more than what I got this Breda for. I got this new at Shields, which is a sporting goods store, for $450 out the door. Pretty impressive for a go to war handgun. Something with military track record, something with lots of experience in law enforcement and civilians, and a very, very reliable platform. Now I have a video on this gun showing some trivia on why a lot of the reliability problems happened with the Beretta, especially in the military, whether it be from bad springs, not replacing parts when they need to, having bad magazines, that's a big one. And honestly, I think it gets a little bit of a bad rap, just like the 1911 does. If you keep the 1911 lubed up and ready to go and very clean, this will run like a top. You can run a thousand rounds clean without any stoppages through a 1911 as long as you lube it up every once in a while. And 1911s like to be clean, it's not a Glock. I think you have a little bit more leeway with the Beretta, honestly, as far as reliability goes. If I had to say which one was more reliable, honestly, I'm a huge 1911 fan, but I gotta go with the Beretta. I just think the Berettas are just slightly more reliable. I think they have a higher capacity and I think they're less cost. So for the average person, for a self-defense, home defense, that kind of thing situation, I think the Beretta is a phenomenal choice. I really do. It's got a great track record. It's got lots of rounds that are very common and they're easy to afford, easy to train with. It has a low recoil and pulse. The slide is relatively easy to push back and it can be changed from a safety to a decocker model, which is big for carry. If you're looking for something that will shoot the dick off a hummingbird, the 1911's your gun. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna say the Beretta can be very, very accurate, and I get that, but I don't think it could ever be as accurate or as fast as the 1911 can be. The 1911's short reset trigger is phenomenal. And if you're talking about how fast the gun really can go, you're gonna talk about either trigger reset your ability to shoot, it's number one, but trigger reset and the ability to soak up that recoil. And 1911s, especially nine millimeter, are very, very fast. Now, if you get into something like 2011, like an STI Apiero, which I have a video on, it's a very fast, very accurate platform. In my opinion, the fastest and the most accurate platform. That short, crisp trigger pull just doesn't pull you off your sights near as much as other guns. Now that's great for an expert and it's great for a novice to learn because a novice shooter would like the low recoil, the simplicity, a lot of novice shooters like the, that extremely positive safety. Now you have to remember that quality 1911s will have that extremely positive and tactile safety. I think that's really important. If you're gonna run a safety a lot, you need to know how to run it and you need to know when it's on and when it's off. 
Don't count the 1911 out. If I had to pick between the two of these myself, I would pick the 1911 all day. If I had to pick one of these guns for your average American or whoever wanted to buy a gun for home defense and carry, I would probably steer them toward the Beretta just from what I've shown today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. And go. I don't have any backup bags because I'm an ass.